peace, love, harmony, and light. Greetings, Halito, my brothers and sisters. How y'all feeling? <laughs> Hope everybody's doing great, man. You know me. Always on that high frequency, man. Just here thinking. And it's amazing, you know, like I said before, when you um when you are on a certain frequency, the things that come to mind, the things that you come across and just putting things in perspective, it's it's amazing. And that happens when you have clarity. That happens when you're not stressed out. That happens when you don't allow circumstances to control your life, but you control your circumstances regardless of what's going on. Remember that you're always in charge. It's always mind over matter. You feel me? It's always mind over matter. Without mind, there could never be matter. What does that mean? It means that the mind deals with the spiritual aspect of things. Okay? The mind deal with the higher self. The mind deal with the higher vibrations, the higher frequencies. Where things tend to manifest first. But then it becomes flesh, which is matter. You feel me? So what I'm saying essentially is you always have to be in control. And when I say you, I'm not talking about the physical you. All right. I'm talking about the I am in you. That that essence of the most high, that essence of the universal creator, that essence of the great spirit. And I'm here thinking, you know, um, I've been for the past few i don't like using that term weeks but for the past few um uh extended hours you know i'll put it that way because nothing about my existence is weak so i'll put it that way for the past extended hours you know and um I've been, you know, purging, I've been detoxing, I've been meditating, I've been reaching out and calling out to my ancestors, you know, asking for more clarity, putting things again in perspective. And here I am thinking, looking at religion, you know, Christianity, and something came to mind that we have to look at the time and era Okay, put ourselves in the place of our ancestors who got caught in this religious realm of the enslavers, you know, the colonizers. And the only options you had was either you became a Christian, you know, be a sheep, be humble, be meek, or you were considered a savage. And of course, you know, the picture that was being painted to the crown that a savage needed to be either killed or become extinct. You know, an, a savage had to be tamed by any means necessary. And put yourself in our ancestors place and don't get me wrong. I'm not making excuses for anything or making excuses for them. But sometimes, you know, depends on the circumstances when we are put in situations that be that's beyond our control when we have to focus on the survival of our children sometimes we do things that goes against our nature our innate being and hey who am i to judge i'm casting no judgment here but i'm putting myself in that time frame in that era and here you are you have a symbiotic relationship with nature okay for the most part we are in a primitive primitive state of mind what does that mean it means that we are walking around practically naked you know a brother a sister could see each other naked and not think of any carnal thoughts you know we are eaten of the land we are connected to nature. And here comes these invaders, right? The likes of like we have never seen before. And in our ignorance, in our 
how in 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 our how would I put it um in our innocence you know I wouldn't say ignorance because we were not well of course I mean hey ignorance just mean lack of knowledge so at some point we are all ignorant to something because no one knows everything so I think a more appropriate word would be in our innocence okay in our childlike state of mind not childish but childlike meaning that in our innocence here comes these people that we had never seen the likes of a different tone a different energy a different complexion the pale race and we again in our innocence thinking that those people fell from the sky that they are our saviors because we had never seen them before all we had seen was the people who looked just like us okay so they came clothed they came dressed you know and we admired that because that was something different once again i'm not saying that we were animals or we are savages no we were in our innocence all right pure hence the status of being white but i'm not going to get into that to confuse anybody but white is a status that means pure free okay and these people came and saw us in our child like our innocence and that's why they have in their book you know go back to being a child because that that's where you are pure you are more connected to nature you are more connected to the most high the all and these people took advantage of our kindness our innocence and they forced their religion on us they forced their gods on us and our ancestors had a choice now am i going to be rebellious and a lot of them were rebellious and a lot of them died a lot of them paid the price a lot of them were hung on trees a lot of them were tied to horses and pulled apart babies were cut from the sternum of the mothers men were castrated and men had to stand there and look at their women being raped and their children being murdered and their daughters being raped and their sons being sodomized we had to stand and look at those atrocities but some of our ancestors gave up hope some of them you know i'm committed suicide because they just couldn't bear the thought of living knowing that their children were taken away their children were raped and murdered some of them committed suicide not that they were weak that was just part of the plan that was just part of their design however those who wanted to stay alive and 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 and, and carry on their legacy they had to conform so they became christians okay they adapted the religion of the pale man of the crusaders of the conquistadors they were christianized baptized and what i realize here in thinking i'm here thinking to myself even in the church even if it was forced on us because before the 1700s there were no churches anywhere in the americas nowhere at all okay in the early 1700s there were no churches period we were still doing things through our culture with that symbiotic relationship with nature paying homage to our ancestors okay so i'm here thinking and i'm here telling myself well check this out though here's something right that in the churches think about it they even today you have christians speaking in tongues and i'm thinking to myself you know what 
It's not speaking in tongues. They were speaking their tongue. But they could only do it in the churches. And look at the hats. The feathers, the feathers left the head, the hair, and put in the hats. They were still trying to hold on to their culture. And think about what I'm saying. Think about what I'm saying. Okay? The stomping. Look at the, the, the look at the rain dance. Right? Look at when our ancestors dance. And look at the dance in the church. Look at the stomping. Look at the stomping. Look at the crip walk. All those things are synonymous with our culture. Give me a second here. You know, all those things are synonymous with our culture. And that was their way of holding on. Holding on to what was taken. Holding on to what was lost. You know, you feel me? And at that point, it's either you were going to be a slave or die or accept Jesus as your savior. So in essence, yes, that allegorical figure that was created that was made by rome by josephus by caesar Borgia, by that was promoted by constantine it became the savior of our ancestors so now that is embedded in their dna and that's why it's so hard it was passed down yes jesus saved me but they cannot go in detail and tell you exactly what it meant and i'm here thinking to myself no there got to be more than this. Please let it make sense to me, ancestors. Give me the clarity. So speaking in tongues was speaking, not speaking in tongues, but speaking their tongue. Okay? And the stomping and the, the catching the, of the so-called Holy Ghost and Spirit, that was the Indian dance. But they had to disguise it as catching the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Yes, it was catching the, the Spirit which is the, the, you know, the great spirit that our ancestors worshipped. The great spirit. Yes. So now they changed that from the great spirit to the Holy Spirit. But that's what, that was the way of communicating to the higher powers, the, the higher being. The most high. The great spirit. By stomping, speaking in their tongue. Catching that supposed Holy Ghost, if I may. And that's why it is so hard. And of course, you know, the propaganda of teaching that's the truth by these pastors who are here misleading people. That It, it goes along with what I'm just explaining to you. That is why it is so hard. For the older generation and even some of the younger generation who grew up in the church to let go. They cannot let go Jesus. Because you see, that was passed down in the DNA that Jesus was your savior. Yes, Jesus was your savior. Not because he died for you. Okay? Not because he died for you. But because he, it was taught to you that if you didn't accept Jesus, which is the God of Christianity, you would die. Your children would be raped. Your husband would be sodomized. Your sons would be sodomized. You would be enslaved in the worst way ever. But if you, if you become meek, humble, you become a Christian, Jesus will have mercy on you. Jesus will forgive you. Jesus will save you. You feel me? So many of our ancestors died so that others could leave through Jesus. Because they had to die. They had to die in order for the others to realize, you know what, if I don't accept Jesus, man, I'm going to die. So Jesus saved them. And now some people may say I'm reaching, but I'm just letting you know that I was just here thinking. And this just came so clear to me that this is what this is all about. That's why they, are, they, they can't let it go. It's so hard for them to let it go. And they have convinced themselves Okay, trying to bury in their subconscious mind, okay, what uh, their ancestors went through. 
And the only way they could make sense out of it is, you know what? This is real. This Jesus character is real. He really saved me. Because it was taught, it was taught that, you know what, this is your savior. When their ancestors, okay, didn't teach them exactly what that meant. You feel me? So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And um, what's the purpose of sharing all this? Again, trying to, well, not trying, making an attempt to assist my people in freeing themselves, not just physically, but also that spiritual freedom of not confounding yourself to the savior of the colonizers okay that was forced upon us all right so it went from the indian dances to being confined in a church that's the only place they could have did it where they could have held on to their culture they had to take out the feathers from the from the head and now put it in a hat so now you, you couldn't walk around every single day with your feathers. However, you were allowed to come to church with your feathers in your hat. Still hold on to part of that culture. Do the Indian dance. Okay. When you honor the great spirit doing that dance, you couldn't do it in public. But hey, you could do it in church. And we're going to, you know, rename it and say, whoa, you're catching the Holy Spirit. You're catching the Holy Ghost. Okay. All that is part of the culture, brothers and sisters. Now, I'm not saying that. You know, I'm not telling you, well, hey, it's okay to be in the church and it's okay to serve Jesus. I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm letting you know the state of mind, okay, during that era, what our ancestors had to deal with to survive so that we could be here. You feel me? So it's going to take some time, some finesse in to explain those things to them and break it down to them so that they could release themselves and relieve themselves from the curse of the pale man you feel me we got work to do brothers and sisters we got work to do all right chief kalanago once again moving in the spirit man you feel me on this a whole different level a whole different frequency bringing nothing but facts the truth all right because the truth is only within you and it manifests outside of you but first you it has to resonate within you Go deep within. Connect. Okay? Ask for guidance. Ask for direction. Seek in truth and you will find. All right? I love you guys, man. So, peace, love, harmony, and light.